Tell us a little about yourself. I decided when I won a talent contest that maybe I'd give it a go in Hollywood. The Virgin Marla has emerged. Some guys never stop looking to hide the salami. What? Do the deed, dip the wick, <laughs> butter the muffin. I get it. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Frank. Hi. Two weeks in Los Angeles, and you're working for Howard Hughes. No harm having high hopes, ma'am. $400 a week on top of this. From all I've read about Howard Hughes, I hope he doesn't expect to meet you in some hotel room. Mr. Hughes, I'd like to thank you for my acting classes, thank you for my ballet classes, and thank you for the chance to become a star. What the hell is she doing here? You said you wanted the girl with, with, with the two ends. Yes, Marilyn Monroe. <gasps> Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. I'm Matt Acheny, that's Alonzo Duraldi, who can't be trusted. Uh, and that's Christy Lemire. Uh, watch our Bad Santa 2 review and all. We'll all make You'll sense. see what I'm talking about. We are here, Trust however, me. to talk about Rules Don't Apply, the latest film from writer, director, and star, Warren Beatty. Please tell us about it. So yeah, Warren Beatty has not directed a movie since Bullworth, so nice to have him back. Uh, this is apparently a movie Warren made for a long time about Howard Hughes, and it's kind of about Howard Hughes um, in the era in which he was running RKO and TWA and trying not to be uh, institutionalized and fighting the government and doing all kinds of things. Uh, meanwhile, one of his drivers, who's played by Alden Ehrenreich, falls in love with one of his starlets, played by Lily Collins, and these two separate movies never quite become one. Take a look. If anybody working for me wants to strike up a relationship with one of our contract actresses, I have to fire him. What are you doing? You've got a driver's license, don't you? Let's go. <laughs> have you heard from people that I'm crazy? <laughs> you are not like other people. You're an exception. Something we didn't plan on has happened. Did somebody give that to you? Who gave that to you? You are a gifted young woman with a wonderful future. Nobody's getting any younger. When you told me the rules don't apply to me, you know, they don't apply to you either. That's kind of my thing. I, I liked the Howard Hughes movie here, and I liked the young Hollywood romance movie yeah. here, but I never saw them become a thing. Yeah, I, you know, one of the things this movie does early on is you it, it keeps Beatty as Hughes in shadow. Yes. And had it stuck to that, that would have been, you could have doubled down on just this story of, like the more interesting story is the younger couple, yeah. right? And kind of in his shadow so to speak. Um, but this movie goes in weird directions and, and it doesn't help that we've gotten such an interesting portrait of Howard Hughes from The Aviator that they, you know, the stuff that The Aviator plays for dramatic effect, this movie does for laughs. And it feels yeah. almost, it just feels weird. I don't know. Like, I, I, I'm okay with the funny, I like, I liked Melvin and Howard a lot. Yeah. You know, like, I think there, there are things you can do with the sort of the Hughes legend that, that you can kind of, you can do different tones of. I didn't love The Aviator, so that movie didn't necessarily weigh on me in, in looking at this one, but I just thought that, um, yeah, you know, it, it, there's, it, Beatty creates this really interesting, odd character and his interactions with his sort of flunkies and underlings and the people who are like, you know, there's this, there's a really funny extended sequence with um, uh, Oliver Platt as the right. guy for, who's flown in from New York from Merrill Lynch to like to loan money to them. And all they want before they make this giant loan is a face-to-face -face meeting with Hughes. And he keeps putting them off and he keeps putting them off and finally like refuses to meet with them. And Oliver Platt is reduced to like standing in the courtyard of the Beverly Hills Hotel being like, Mr. Hughes! We're here, <laughs> right? Um, and that's really funny. And so, like, that's an interesting movie. And then the Alden Ehrenreich Lily Collins stuff is sweet and you know very period specific and charming. And and they didn't feel like kind of cardboard cutouts. Although I assume both characters are kind of you know inventions, composites that Beatty and Bo Goldman came up with. But but then they never. But they don't mix. They don't. Yeah. They, Hughes doesn't weigh enough on their story, and they don't weigh enough on Hughes's well, story. Well, except that, that Hughes does, though, right? Because then there's there's the Lily Collins moment where, like, it goes in a different direction. Like, you think, you know, this movie starts out as this forbidden romance story, right? right? And then it turns itself into this story about Hughes and his attempt to stay out of the loony bin, and you don't get enough of either one, right? And it's yeah. and. 
I mean, yeah, they, they obviously he influences what happens to them. Right. But the movie never kind of brings his story and their story together into a story. Right. And as as we get back into Aaron Reich's story and Colin's story, like, well, first of all, like Colin's all but gets written out of the movie and we focus on Aaron Reich and right. you kind of don't care anymore because he's made his decision and you just see where that's going. And so when, you know, when it all kinds of tries to wrap itself up at the end, doesn't all work yeah, all that it, well. It, it like, feels this movie's a, a mess. It's a little too airtight. Yeah, it's a little all over the place. And and I don't know if maybe Beatty needed more or another writer in the room to be like, this is good. Let's ditch this. I don't know. But here's the thing, though. What's what's in there is churse, as uh, Spencer Tracy would say. I mean, I think it's it's beautifully shot. I mean, Beatty is sort of you know one of our last living filmmakers who's still connected to you know, the 50s and the 60s kind of golden era of, I mean, obviously it's not the golden ages earlier, but, you know, like when, when Alden Ehrenreich is shot in profile and looks like Warren Beatty in Splendor in the Grass, you're like, okay, well that's, you know, yes, Beatty was around for that stuff and he's still making movies in that very gloriously old-fashioned kind of way. There's even a theme song, you know, which nobody does anymore, but... Um, but it just it's 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 all like right. it's all these lovely museum pieces that don't become an exhibition, you know. Yeah, I I was disappointed in this because it it just felt you know especially knowing that this is something Beatty's wanted to do for decades. Yeah, and I kind of feel like should have kept working on it. Like, it you know, the, there's, on, or not, they, or there's not, not yeah, done it. Well, there's something to say about pa together. sometimes passion projects should stay in the drawer. Like you, right. there, it there, just feels half baked. Yeah, there's so many filmmakers you can sort of look at history where like they 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 get their they get to do whatever they want because they just came off like a big hit or whatever. And then you know, I was my go-to was always Barry Levinson and Toys. Uh, you know, right. he wanted to make that movie for years and years and years. And then he finally like I forget what else did really well, and so he got to make Toys, and it's like. That's, yeah. a, that's a movie that's like, you know, yeah, beautiful pieces, but this is not, this doesn't work. Right. And and Rules on Play doesn't work, but I liked the three lead performances and and a, and a great, a, a deep bench supporting cast in yeah. this thing. Yeah, You know, like, I mean, there are, you know, there, like, uh, there, there are people who show up for one line. Right, her parents. You know. Right, her parents are yeah, are, are Ed Harris and Amy Madigan. Right. Oh my god! Yeah, or no, no, right. not her parents, but the the, the other fiance's oh, parents. Right. The fiance's Annette parents. Benning and uh, Matthew Broderick and and uh, uh, Candace Bergen, like Kyle Bornheimer, who if you watch TV, you'll recognize this guy. He was on Worst Week, and he's done a bunch of stuff. Like, is has a wordless role as a hospital orderly because yeah. it's like I'm sure even though he gets good gigs, he's like, what Warren Beatty wants me for a day as an orderly? I'm sure. in, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, I, I want. I wish I liked this movie more, but I'm glad I saw it, and I think that if you, if you go in knowing that it's it, it's 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 not, it doesn't work. But it's, <laughs> right. there's lovely stuff in it. You can enjoy the lovely stuff in it. That is a ringing endorsement. Yeah. So what is your number, Alonzo? I, I give it a seven. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think it it's a solid something. You know, it's just not what it could have been. You said like four. four yeah. Do you like your four? I like my four. It's right. it's a mess. Like it's a mess. And I, you know, part of it is I think I'm low on this because I expect a lot better out of Beatty. Sure, uh, that's fair. It's no Reds. I mean, you know. Right. It's not even Dick Tracy. They're but no, <laughs> hey, it's better than Bad Santa too. Right. If, yes, if yes it standard, is. I will give you that. Bar. It is better than Bad Santa too. Okay, our, their number, not mine, their number is 5.5. .5. And where is it in Tomato Land? Uh, it's about 59% percent right now. It's ish. just on the rotten side, but it's been right on the edge. Best movie of the week is Moana, you guys. Go see that if you're going to see a movie with your family after you've had too much pie. Bye.